Well, hello again, everyone. Welcome back to my weekly look at thoroughbred racing. Uh, yes, yeah, sort of a clickbaity title, isn't it? Amazing profits from the wagon wheel, but I am definitely amazed by what this thing is actually producing. Now, I've listed on screen here the results for all of those races where I managed to retain the spreadsheet. Now, I did mention earlier that I've lost about six or seven of them. I don't know where they went. So this is not the full list of all the races that I've applied the wagon wheel to, but it's pretty much most of them. And it was way back at the beginning here when we were trying to look for the winner of the Melbourne Cup. And this one in here, Twilight Payment, is where uh, Twilight Payment came up as the top pick uh, for the Melbourne Cup. And of course it didn't win. But prior to that, as we were just testing this out, it came up with just about the winner of every race that we applied the wagon wheel to. And so on screen are all of the top selections for each of the races that I've applied the strategy to. And looking at it, you can see that almost half of them have found the winner by looking at the very top selection from the strategy. Now, if you just bet on them straight out, return on investment was 124%. Uh, if you applied the wagon wheel percentage to it, in other words, you bet according to what the wagon wheel price was, so you had a lot more on the lower wagon wheel priced horses than the higher ones. So for example, Smoke and Romans here, the wagon rated at $2.71, so we've had nearly $37 on that, whereas I'm Thunderstruck here, uh, rated at $7.14, we would have only had $14 on that. So applying that, we've got a return on investment of only 82%. And if we just restricted ourselves to betting according to the wagon wheel percentages on those that were value bets. So the first one would have been King Magnus here, priced at 5.46, but we could have got $9.60 about it. So we had a bet. The next one though, I'm Thunderstruck, the price was too poor, so no bet. And following on, the return on investment is 106%. Now, it doesn't matter which way you approached your staking plan. Uh, those are awesomely good returns on investment. Way out in front of anything that I would have expected to be reasonable. And so we've got a strike rate of 48.5%. I really don't think that can continue. Uh, and at the moment, we've been going for about two months uh, where we've been sort of applying the strategy and reporting to you on a weekly basis on what's going on. I'm thinking this is going to fall down. There's, there's no way I believe it's possible to find the winner of almost half of the races that we're settling on. Maybe it is. That's just my gut feel at the moment. Now, an interested viewer did suggest that I might want to take a look at uh, the Kelly Optimizer. The, it's a little bit of research done looking at what size should your bets be. Uh, so courtesy of Wikipedia, uh, the gambling formula goes something like this. Uh, F star is the fraction of the current bank roll that you need to wager. Now, at the moment, we're placing our bets based on uh, the prices from the wagon wheel, and we're betting to return $50 based on those prices. This particular approach is saying, well, no, what you need to do, if you're just going to be betting on, say, the one horse in a race, how much of your bank do you put on that horse? Well, the formula that you use is P minus Q over B, where P is the probability of a win. And for us, it's 48.5%. Q is the probability of a loss, which currently is 51.5%. And B is the proportion of the bet gained when you do have a win. So looking at those numbers for us, the probability of a win is 48.5%, loss 51.5%. If you look at all those prices of the horses that we've actually had collects on, the proportion of a bet gained on the win is 3.63. So applying that to the formula, we get 0.485 subtract 0.515 divided by 3.63, and that comes out to 0.343. In other words, you need to bet about one third of the bank, which I think is actually an unrealistic amount to be betting. You know, you only need to have a run of five or six losers in a row and your bank absolutely gets decimated if you're doing that. But, you know, you could go and uh, check the results out, I guess, uh, do your own research on this. I think a more realistic thing to be looking at would be to say, well, look, 
you know, we've currently got a rate of 48.5% strike rate, but let's just be realistic and say, let's say we can get 3 out of 10. Uh, you know, if we could get 4 out of 10, that'd be awesome. But 3 out of 10, if you'd just be betting on your top selection, I think would be about as good as you're going to get. So that means that the probability of the bet losing is 0.7. If we keep the same uh, prices, in other words, the proportion of the bet gained at 3.63, we do the calculation, uh, then you come up with 0.107. So you're betting 10% of the bank, which is still probably a bit higher than I would have thought, but I think way more reasonable than putting one third of the bank onto a bet. So I've run that over the strategy on all of these races, beginning with I'm Thunderstruck way back here. I think it was in the Turak Handicap and running through to the last race last week on Lord Ardmore. So we're starting with a bank of $1,000. So the Kelly bet would be 10% of that, which is $100. It was a winner. Uh, so we got a total profit of $220. The bank's gone up to $1,220. And so the next Kelly bet is 10% of that, which is $122 on Incentivize in the Caulfield Cup. It wins. 10% of that's $139. We bet that on Nature Strip in the Everest uh, and so on. And we keep applying it. Now we did have a, a drought here of one, two, three, four, five, six, and eight losers in a row. And you can see what it's done to the bank. Uh, it's dropped it from nearly $8,000 down to $3,300. Now that is one of the things to consider when you have this fixed percentage of the bank that you're betting on every race. Uh, now, you know, if that happened to uh, occur on top of itself and you got 16 in a row, then you might find your bank gets absolutely decimated. But this is an approach. And if you follow the approach all the way through, unbelievable amount of money made over the last two or three months. Your thousand dollars has grown to 19,550 before your last bet of nearly $2,000 on Lord Ardmore. Uh, which did not win, and so your bank has fallen by that nearly $2,000. So awesome returns at the moment. Early days in this, this was just a little bit of a fun piece of analysis, a little bit of fun investigation, and it's turning out to be just a little bit serious, if you ask me. So what have we been doing? Well, we've been sort of applying this value bet approach. And right now, extraordinary how numbers just turn out. The world is a very strange place. At the very beginning, I said, well, look, I'm targeting a return on investment of 20%. And I'm hoping that I can get a strike rate of 40% by betting on multiple horses in each race that are value propositions. And here we are at the end of 40 races that I've done this on. Profit $210. We've turned the bank over once. $1,034. Return on investment 20.3%. You know, I was talking the other day about the stock market being spooky. Well, this is again so spooky that what I was targeting is what we've eventually ended up with after 40 bets. So moving forward, we've turned the bank over once. We've now got the bank up to uh, $1,210. And so we're now going to up our bets a little bit. So rather than trying to return $50 per bet, which was 5% of 1,000, we're moving that up now to 5% of $1,200. And so based on that $1,200, our bets are now going to be based on getting a return of 60. So if you're using the spreadsheet, You'll need to go in and adjust the formula in here uh, on the amount that you're going to bet. So there would have been a 50 in here in the formula. You need to change that to 60 and then copy and paste that down and fill that column down on your blank spreadsheet. So that's where we're at now. As I said, awesome results. Let's hope they can continue. And so with that said and done, let's have a look at this week's races. Well, it's Magic Millions weekend and I've selected all of my races this weekend at the Gold Coast. There were a couple of other possibilities, one at Flemington and one at Ascot, but they were both sprint races, so I decided to bypass them. So the first race is Gold Coast Race 2. It's a $250,000 open class race over 1,800 metres. 
The wagon has selected the favourite to win, that's Wheelhouse, but at the moment it's poorly priced. Uh, and so it's suggesting there are four possible bets for a total of $31, remembering that we're now aiming to return $60 from our bets based on uh, the wagon wheel price. And the second race, Gold Coast Race 3, is a $1 million open class race over 2,400 metres. Only four possible chances, but the wagon is suggesting that the favourite Parry Sound is too poorly priced to get on board, and the top selection confrontational is very well priced at $10 so <laughs> fingers crossed that that one can get up. Third race Gold Coast race four is another $1 million race this time fillies and mares set weights and penalties 1300 meters so just uh, over the required distance and lots and lots of chances according to the wagon wheel. Uh, top selection Brookspire here at $4.20 uh, last time it went out was a very, very short price favourite and got beaten uh, at that run. So a lot longer price today, uh, but still poorly priced according to the wagon wheel and only two bets. Um, and so only $13 going on to this race. Clearly the wagon is saying that there's lots of chances uh, and so most of them are poorly priced. Uh, race six is the next one. Another $1 million race, listed class this time, over 1,400 metres. And again, have a look at this, the wagon wheel is saying almost the entire field has some sort of chance of winning the race. Uh, and it's come up with six possible bets for a total investment of $20. So, um, yep, you can have a look through those there. The top pick here, looking through, is 11.11. Uh, rated at $8.71, but is currently priced at $7. So those top selections are, are not uh, coming up as bets, uh, especially much at the moment. Gold Coast Race 8, second last go for the day, $2 million, three-year-old listed race. It's the Guineas. Again, many, many chances in the race. The two top picks, equally rated, are at good prices. So we're going to be getting on those. Shahonka and Indiscreetly. We're going to be betting about $10.50 on both of those. Pretty much for sure. I don't think the price is going to change enough for uh, that to be impacting our decision. Quite a bit on this race, $38.40. But uh, some long price horses there. Release the beans. Priced at $9.90, but it's currently rated at $41 by the bookies. So another one down here, Dovetail Diva, rated at $17, but $61 with the bookies. So uh, the wagon wheel suggesting there's some value bets here. Uh, probably not much chance of them winning, but that's why you're only having a small amount of money on them. Last race, Gold Coast at race nine, another million dollar race, open class over 1,300 metres. Wide open race again, $4.93 the favourite here, according to the wagon wheel, but it's poorly drawn, barrier 15, and the wagon wheel is saying, well, yeah, we're picking it to win, but it's poorly priced. And so only two other bets in this race, a very small investment of $13. So that's it for this week, six races, and quite a number of those races with a large number of chances, according to the wagon wheel. So, uh, you know, it could be a difficult week for the system this week. And as a result of the research that I've been doing over the 40 races and the results that we're getting from the top selections, I've decided I'm just going to add a little bit into uh, the strategy for this particular rotation. And so not only are we going to be betting on the value bets, but also going to be placing uh, some bets on the top selection in each race. Uh, and I'm thinking won't sort of burst into it in a big way. And so we're going to be having $15 on each of the top selections in the race. So this week we're probably going to be having around about $200 invested. And that's our entire profit. So fingers crossed that we're going to get some sort of returns uh, from those bets, whether they be the value bets or the bets on the top selections, uh, as suggested by the wagon wheel. So happy punting this weekend. Hope you've found the uh, analysis informative and encouraging. And I look forward uh, to bringing you the results next Friday after what we again hope will be a successful weekend on the punt.